Welcome to a lesson on second order systems of ODEs and applications with forced oscillations. Suppose now that our system is x double prime equals a times x plus f times cosine of omega t. That is, we are adding periodic forcing to the system in the direction of vector f. As before, this system just requires us to find one particular solution, x sub p, add it to the general solution of the associated homogeneous system, which we call x sub c, then if we sum x sub p and x sub c, we have the general solution to equation 3.4. Let us suppose that omega is not one of the natural frequencies of x double prime equals a times x. Then we guess x sub p, a particular solution, equals c times cosine of omega t, where c is an unknown constant vector. Note that we do not need to use sine since there are only second derivatives in our equation. We solve for c to find x sub p. This is really just the method of undetermined coefficients for systems. Let us differentiate x sub p twice to get x sub p double prime equals negative omega squared times c times cosine of omega t. And now we plug x sub p and x sub p double prime into our equation 3.4 and the result is shown below. Now we divide out the cosine and rearrange the equation to obtain the sum of a and omega squared i times c equals negative f. Solving for c, we have c equals the inverse of the sum of a and omega squared i times negative f. Of course, this is possible only when the sum of a and omega squared i is invertible. That matrix is invertible if and only if negative omega squared is not an eigenvalue of matrix a. This is true if and only if omega is not a natural frequency of the system. And now we simplify things a bit. If we wish to have the forcing term to be in the units of force, say newtons, then we write the system as m times x double prime equals k times x plus g times cosine of omega t. Next we multiply through by m inverse, which gives us x double prime equals m inverse times k times x plus m inverse times g times cosine of omega t. If we let a equal m inverse times k, we now have x double prime equals a times x plus f times cosine of omega t, where f is equal to m inverse times g. And now let's put all this together by looking at an example. Let's take the example in figure 3.13 below, where we have two masses and two springs, where m1 is equal to two, m2 is equal to one, k1 is equal to four, and k2 is equal to two. Now suppose that there is a force, two cosine three t, acting on the second card. We set up the system of equations that models this system when there's no oscillating force given by two cosine t. Let's review how we did that. Recall force is equal to x times k, where x is a spring compression and k is a spring constant, and f is also equal to m times a, where m is mass and a is acceleration. So if we focus on mass one for a moment, on the left of the first equation we have m1 times x1 double prime, which is mass times acceleration, and now for the right side, as mass one moves to the right, notice the first spring is stretched, giving a force to the left, which will be a negative force, and that force is equal to the spring constant times the spring compression, or in this case, the stretch of the spring. This is given by negative k1 times x1. As m1 moves to the right, the second spring is compressed, giving a force to the right, or a positive force, and that force is equal to k2 times the amount of spring compression given by the difference of x2 and x1. Now moving to mass two, we have m2 times x2 double prime, which again is mass times acceleration. As mass two moves to the right, the second spring is stretched, giving a force to the left, or a negative force, which is equal to the spring constant of k2 times the amount of a spring stretch given by the difference of x2 and x1. And again, it's negative here because the force is to the left. And now we substitute m1, m2, k1, and k2 into the equations and simplify, which gives us the two equations here at the bottom. And if we write this system as the equation m times x double prime plus k times x, matrix m is the two by two matrix with entries of two and one along the main diagonal. These are the coefficients of the second derivatives. And we have times x double prime equals matrix k, which contains the coefficients of x1 and x2 giving us the two by two matrix with entries negative six, two, two, negative two, times vector x. But now because we have an oscillating force given by two cosine three t on the second cart, we have plus the vector g, which is the vector zero, two, times cosine three t. 
Notice the vector g is the vector zero two because the force of two cosine three t is only acting on the second cart. The next step is to multiply through by m inverse because m is a diagonal matrix. We can determine m inverse by determining the reciprocals of the entries along the main diagonal, which I have here on the right. The next line here shows multiplying through by m inverse, and the result is an equation in the form of x double prime equals a times x plus f times cosine of omega t, which in our case is x double prime equals the two by two matrix A with entries negative three, one, two, negative two, which again is the result of M inverse times K. And then we have times vector X, and then we have plus the vector zero, two, which is a result of M inverse times G, and then times cosine three T. And now to find the solution, we first find the solution to the associated homogeneous equation shown here on the left, which we already did in a previous video, and it's shown here. But let's go through the process again for review. Recall the first step to solve the homogeneous equation is to find the eigenvalues of matrix A. We do this by setting up the equation the determinant of the difference of A and lambda I equals zero, and then we solve for lambda. Here's the setup, simplifying and solving for lambda. Notice we have lambda equals negative four or lambda equals negative one. This indicates more specifically that lambda sub one equals negative one and lambda sub two equals negative four. This also indicates negative omega one squared is negative one, and negative omega two squared is equal to negative four, indicating omega one equals one, omega two equals two. And now we need to determine corresponding eigenvectors. So here we have the setups to find corresponding eigenvectors for lambda sub one and lambda sub two. For lambda sub one, we simplify. The system has an infinite number of solutions. The first equation is negative two v one plus v two equals zero, or v two equals two v one. If we let v1 equal one, v2 equals two, giving us a corresponding eigenvector, vector v1, which is the vector one, two. Similarly, for lambda sub two equals negative four, using the first equation, we, we have v1 plus v2 equals zero, or v1 equals negative v2. Letting v2 equal negative one, v1 equals one, giving us the eigenvector v2 equals the vector one, negative one. And now we can put all these pieces together to determine the general solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation. Using our formula here in the upper right hand corner, we have x sub c, the complementary solution is equal to eigenvector v1, which is the vector one, two, times the sum of a1 cosine t plus b1 sine t. Notice the input for the trig functions is t because omega one is one. And we have plus the eigenvector v2 times the sum of a2 cosine two t and b2 sine two t, the two t because omega two is equal to two. And now we need to find a particular solution. The natural frequencies are one and two, given by omega one and omega two. Notice three is not a natural frequency, and therefore we try a particular solution, x sub p equals c times cosine of three t. And now to find the particular solution, we need to determine the constant vector c. We do this using the equation shown here, we first find the inverse of the sum of a and omega squared i, which is shown here, which is shown here in this line. And now that we have the inverse matrix, we simply multiply this by the opposite of vector f, which should be the opposite of the vector zero two, which is the vector zero negative two. And this gives us the constant vector c is the vector one twentieth negative three tenths. And now that we have x sub c and x sub p, we can determine the general solution. The general solution is x equals x sub c plus x sub p, which is equal to the vector one, two, times the sum of a one cosine t and b one sine t, plus the vector one negative one, times the sum of a two cosine two t and b two sine two t, and then plus the vector one twentieth negative three tenths times cosine three t. At this point, if we had initial conditions, we would solve for a one, a two, b one, and b two. I hope you found this helpful.